YouTube, it's Andrea and I'm here today with my July book haul. These book hauls are actually getting smaller, I'm really proud of myself for not buying so many books in the month of July. Some of them were left over from uh, birthday money but I didn't get them in June, I got them in July so they're in this one. And um, I am trying to put myself on a book buying ban because I've got over 200 physical books in the other room to read. As well as the 800 or 900 ebooks that are on my Kindle and my like e-reader, so I'm really bad. I'm a bad, bad person. So anyway, you don't care about that. You want to see what I bought, right? In July, right? So with the rest of my birthday money, I bought the following. I bought this beautiful little edition of *The Murder at the Vicarage* by Agatha Christie, which is the very first, I think, the very first. The very first Miss Marple novel and as you can see it's a reproduction of the original Crime Club edition and they do have a few of these for uh, the Miss Marple collection so I'm going to collect these because these are really pretty. So basically let's see if we can find out what it is. Murder at the Vicarage, if you don't know. In the peaceful village of St Mary Mead, nothing ever happens. So it seems almost incredible when Colonel Prithero, the church warden, is discovered shot through the head. <gasps> In the Vicarage study, where else? Everybody thinks they know who has done it, including Miss Marple, the real old maid of the village, who knows everything and sees everything and hears everything. She declares that at least seven people have reasons for wishing Colonel Prothero out of the way. Excitement dies down when somebody confesses to having committed the crime, but that is not the end, for almost immediately somebody quite different also confesses, and there is a third confession through the telephone. But who really killed Colonel Prothero? It's been years since I've read this, so I'm really looking forward to getting onto this one again. Yay, books. Keeping on with our Agatha Christie Fest, well, another book I bought with some of the birthday money I had was the fully revised and updated edition of Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks, Stories and Secrets of Murder in the Making, uh, compiled by John Curran. So, basically the back says, writing over 100 books and plays in a career spanning more than 50 years, Agatha Christie had become the world's best-selling novelist by the time she died in 1976, a record she still holds. But how did she do it? Unearthed after her death were 73 private notebooks whose contents were to remain largely mysterious until John Curran began to decipher her almost unreadable handwriting. Only then did the treasure trove that they contain become fully apparent. Combined into one definitive volume, this fully revised and updated edition of the award-winning Agatha Christie's Secret Notebooks and Murder in the Making explores the techniques she used to surprise and entertain generations of readers, with a wealth of unpublished materials including early versions of four complete short stories. It gives a new insight into the Queen of Crime's creative genius. How fantastic. And there's an introduction by David Suchet who played Poirot. And it is huge. Look, you could build a house if you had enough of these books. They are truly bricks. They're not even just bricks, they're almost breeze blocks. Um, I have read about, so far, before we started Book Tubathon, 129 pages. And in this book, there are, if we go right to the acknowledgements, I can't, I mean, there obviously is an index. There's about 760 pages in this book. It's quite a chunky one. So I'll be dipping into that one throughout the rest of the year, I think. Another the book was one that we saw in my wrap up and that was The Dark Isle by Claire Carson, which was sent to me by Hedges News Publishing. Now I will read you the synopsis and it basically says, Sam grew up in the shadow of the secret state. Her father was an undercover agent full of tall stories about tradecraft and traitors. And then he died, killed in the line of duty. Now Sam has travelled to Hoy in Orkney to piece together the puzzle of a father's past. Haunted by echoes of childhood holidays, Sam is sure the truth lies buried here, somewhere. What she finds is a tiny island of dramatic skies, swooping birds, rugged sea stacks and just 400 people. An island remote enough to shelter someone who doesn't want to be found. An island small enough to keep a secret. So yeah, it is a very interesting book. I have read this, as I said, there is a review on my blog. Um, but yeah, you know, 
who turns down a free book? Especially from Head of Zeus, who, who, whose books are absolutely fantastic, I'm not going to lie. The next book is a book my partner read and it's called Blue A Memoir, Keeping the Peace and Falling to Pieces by John Sutherland. He wanted to read this. Um, basically, um, John Sutherland joined the Met Police in 1992, having dreamed of being a police officer since his teens. Rising quickly through the ranks, he worked across the capital, experiencing firsthand the enormous satisfaction as well as the endless trauma that a life in blue can bring. There were remarkable career-defining moments, commanding armed seizures, saving lives and helping to take dangerous people off the streets. But for every case with a happy ending, there were others that ended in desperate sadness. In early 2013, John suffered a major breakdown and consequent battle with crippling depression after a career spent racing to the, be the first at the scene of crimes and catastrophes he found himself in pieces and able to put one foot in front of the other. Blue is a memoir of crime and calamity, of adventure and achievement, of friendship and failure, of laughter and loss, of the best and worst of humanity, of serious illness and slow recovery. With searing honesty it offers an immensely moving and personal insight into what it is to be a police officer in Britain today. So Paul has read this and he did enjoy it. He said it's slow going to start with, but it does get very good. So I will be picking that up at some point, maybe during November and, you know, never know with non thick The next book I got was the book that was in my book and a brew for July. I didn't do an unopening because I actually received it like 10 days late because it had to go to the sorting office because we weren't in when it was delivered. And you know what? I just couldn't. Couldn't be bothered to go down and get it in the week and then being on lates, I couldn't go down and get it in the week because it was closed by the time I finished. So I finally picked it up on Saturday. And this book is by Neil Oliver and it's called Master of Shadows. And basically this one says, in 15th century Constantinople, uh, Prince Constantine sends saves the life of a broken hearted girl, but the price of his valour is high. John Grant is a man on the edge of the world. His unique abilities carry him from his home in Scotland to the heart of the Byzantine Empire in search of a girl and a chance to, to fulfil a deathbed promise. Lena has remained hidden from the, man, the men who have been searching for her for many years. When she's hunted down at last, she knows what she must do. With an army amassing beyond the city's ancient walls, the fates of these three will intertwine. As the siege of Constantinople reaches its climax, each must make a choice between head, heart, duty and destiny. So that sounds a bit of a go, doesn't it? Hey, I don't want a beautiful cover. Look at that. The beautiful gold foil, that beautiful, I call it Wedgwood Blue, but that's just me. <laughs> I love that colour blue. Next, um, I have two graphic novels that I bought with, again, some of my birthday money, and they are Wonder Woman. So it's the DC Universe Rebirth, Wonder Woman, Volume 1, The Lies, and Volume 2, Year 1. I just thought, you know, why not? You know, it's the year of Wonder Woman. We've had the film. I still haven't seen it, but I'm getting it. I'm going to get it on DVD as soon as it's released on Blu-ray. I don't care. I'm getting it. Because uh, I never got to see it in summer. Wonder Woman 2 has been confirmed for 2019, is it? Or oh, Christmas 2018 or 2019, I'm not sure. But it has been confirmed, so there will be a sequel. Yay! For Wonder Woman and Gail Gadot. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading them. I don't often read graphic novels. I really don't. Wonder Woman is the exception to the rule. I I've obviously have the graphic novel of uh, The Last Hero, which is the Terry Pratchett one. But other than that, generally not. Um, I do have some Wonder Woman graphic novels and I do have a lot of the Wonder Woman comics. Some of them going back to the 1960s that I've collected over the years. But generally I don't read them, but this I will. I'm looking forward to that. I, who doesn't love a bit of wonder in their lives? Okay, so other than that, two more to go. The next one is Stephen King, The Walls of Cala, as I mentioned in my wrap-up. Look at the size of this. They just keep getting bigger. This one's gone up to... Uh, we just get past all of his notes. 776 pages, people! For book five. Ugh. The man is mad. Anyway, in the fifth novel of Stephen King's best-selling fantasy series, Roland and his quartet are bearing through the forests of the Midworld on their journey to the Dark Tower. 
Tracking their every move is a group of farmers from the town of Calabrin Sturgis. The, the trackers have been warned that the wolves, a band of mass riders, are about to gallop out of the dark land of Thunderclap and raid their town, and they want to enlist the help of the four gunslingers. How can Roland and his tet both protect the innocent community and return to New York to save our world's incarnation of the Dark Tower from the machinations of the evil Sombra Corporation? So yeah, I have been enjoying these. It's just, I think, Wizards and Glass is uh, uh, the one I'm reading. It's big and it tends to stall the story because he's telling you about his life before now it's not actually progressing the, the journey to the dark tower he's telling you about how he met um susan delgado and and that and it's sort of like well yeah but get to the point but i'm sure there will be one so there's that one oh yes and the last book i got in august july rather gosh no we're not at the end of august yet july was jody taylor's the long and the short of it this is the short story collection of the Chronicles of St Mary's. Every year Jodie Taylor he publishes two short stories, usually one in summer and one in uh, Christmas and people had been asking if they would put them into print form and while there was only a few of them it was like no but uh, then they realised suddenly they had enough to do a print version so they have done the print version. So I didn't bother getting these when they were just the ebooks. I wanted them physically so I waited for this to come out and there is one brand new story in it as well. So the stories we have in the long and the short of it are When a Child is Born, Roman Holiday, Christmas Present, Ships, Stings and Wedding Rings, The Great St Mary's Day Out, My Name is Markham, The Very First Damned Thing and The New Story which is A Perfect Storm uh, which came out this year. Now there will be obviously another Christmas story so hopefully at some Point in the future we will have another collection of St Mary's short stories. I am chomping at the bit to get to this book because I she makes me laugh. If you read she always puts in a, a list of her characters at the beginning um, and uh, so she calls it a dramatis thing of me and there's a little bit uh, of an explanation of the characters. So for instance Dr Maxwell Chief Operations Officer, Historian, Midwife, the only one covered in snake goo, instigator of all things illegal and slightly dishevelled fairy, busy. Dr Bairstow, Director of St Mary's, all-seeing, all-knowing, a bit like the Eye of Saroon, but not so benign. Mrs Partridge, PA to Dr Bairstow in Muse of History. The History Department, Dr Peterson, Chief Training Officer and Willing Accomplice, briefly Superman. And then it just lists them. Miss Van Owen, historian. Mr Roberts, historian, not a eunuch. Miss Gray, set off for 12th century Jerusalem and never returned, then did. Mr Bashford, ditto, concussed. Who can tell? Mr Atherton, historian, probably up, no, up to no good because that's what historians do. Miss Sykes, ditto. Mr Bavistock, historian. And, and so on, and some of them are really funny. Um, technical section. Mr. Dieter, senior technic technician, bit like a brick, outhouse. And, and then we've got various, various, various bits and pieces. So um, uh, if we have a look for it, one of the ones was um, Mrs. Green, a lady who wants to go to the ball, ancestor of someone special to Dr. Bairstow. And these are under historical figures. William Shakespeare, and it just says playwright. Boudicca, another redhead, say no more. Uh, Alfred the Great, fighting the good fight against the Danes, founder of the Navy, fireminder, failed cake watcher. A good wife, owner of the cakes, broom wielder. Not happy. And then, plus the cast of thousands, and it goes on. So, yes. We love this, we do. It is, Jodie Taylor is the only person worthy of being a successor to my favorite ever author, Terry Pratchett. In fact, she mentioned the Discworld in one of these novels, um, and there are eight of them now, and this one, I think, and they are just fantastic. 
so basically the back says I know I've waffled on about this because I just love Jodie Taylor's books um, it says time travel meets history in this explosive best-selling adventure series a carnival ride through laughter and tears with a bit of time travel thrown in for spice which is what publishers weekly have said the long and the short of it collects the eight unmissable short stories from international best-selling author Jodie Taylor now with new introductions plus a brand new story a perfect storm follow the tea soaked disaster magnets of St Mary's as they rattle around history because wherever the historians go chaos is sure to follow so I'm really looking forward to that because I just love it yeah, you know that's going to be read this month, don't you? Yeah, there's nothing, no, ha no sitting on the TBR pile for Jodie Taylor, I can tell you. So those are all the books I got in July. I am putting myself on a miniature book by a man. And I say miniature because, obviously, I still need to get the rest of the Dark Tower series and anything from the Stephen king thong that we're doing with uh, Missy the Binge Reader. So, because I don't have all those, but I just get them uh, every now and again. I am going to try, try, try not to buy any books. You just know that's not going to work. But if I can just keep it to around five purchases in a month, I will be happy. And I'm going to try, really, really try to read more than I buy. And that does not include ebooks because I only have a very rarely pay for those. I usually download the free ones. Of course, if I find an ebook I like and I've downloaded it for free, then of course I will well, no, shut up the next one. So, for instance, the, the um, Haunting of Winchester Mansion by Alexandra Clark which was in my wrap-up, I have bought the next book in the series. So I've read book naught, and now I've got book one ready on my phone to read when I feel up to it. So that's all the books I bought in July. So what did you buy? Did you buy any of these books? Or have you read any of these books? Has anybody made it through Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebook? Or have they died in the attempt? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. And, and, the, same, and, and the same with Wolves of Colour. Can anybody ever survive long enough to read the entire Dark Tower series because it's so huge? That's what we need to know. So if you've read any of these, leave me a comment and don't forget to like, share and of course subscribe and I will see you soon booktube so happy reading! Bye!